this is the major news of the week, isn't it? So, um, as most of you are aware, you know, I've been in, I, I said I've been an avid, or I've kind of, I'm a, ret- I'm a semi-retired sneakerhead, I'd say for that regard, right? I don't count myself as a sneakerhead because I think labels are gay, and also I think sneakerheads can be a little bit cringe, especially the stereotypical, you know, your whole house looks like a flipping, you know, Supreme Web Store thing. It can be a bit annoying with your babe duvet covers, it's just a bit cringe. But in general, of course, you know, I've been following that shit buying that shit for years and years and years and um as i've kind of grown older and stuff and kind of had more you know disposable income and but then i've also kind of unfortunately uh pulled far and pulled more away from the actual subculture itself in terms of going to events hanging out stores uh sneaker releases uh panel discussions all that stuff right i'm not really involved as i was prior prior so it's kind of removed me from having the ability to have connections and to have plugs to able to to enable me to get the shoes that i want so i'm now having to buy shoes like a regular civilian for the last what five or so years that's been one of the things i've not really had anybody been able to kind of hook me up with anything which is fine because again i'm not one that kind of goes out and ask for stuff but it's really kind of um highlighted to me the issue and the real and the real problem when it comes to buying limited edition shoes right it's just very difficult um and i just don't think it's fair and i just don't think it makes any sense when you consider how big the industry is now the market it's a billion dollar uh, market for sure um there's you know a million brands competing for the same dollar from the same sneaker heads it's the same models getting retroed year in year after year um and for the most part, nothing has really changed in terms of the ability for regular people like you and I to get a pair of these shoes. Um, we have stuff like Sneaker App, which is a whole dub, and we have various websites doing their own little um, routes in order to get people to buy the shoes and, you know, doing raffles, all this kind of stuff, which I'm obviously against. I always think this idea that you have money and you have to win a chance to buy a pair of shoes is flipping insane. They've, they've effectively um, redefined what the term raffle means. It's sort of equivalent to when the English dictionary had to kind of redefine the term um, literally because people were using it in the wrong way. So it same, feels the same things happen with the term raffle. Raffle used to mean you, you'd win something for free and now raffle means you get the chance to buy something with your hard-earned money and you also have to enter at a specific time case in point the sneakers app if you don't enter to buy the shoe at a particular time um then you don't get even a chance to even to get involved in the raffle it's just a whole lot of nonsense and of course with all that stuff going on with computers and internet shit it's always prime for exploitation it's prime for scamming and this has been occurring for a long time don't get me wrong right when i used to work in a sneaker store i worked in 1948 um there was a really you know popular sneaker store here in london sorry 1948 1949 1949 whatever it's called 1949 yeah 1949 yeah i'm in shoreditch I was one of the first group of staff that was working there. I worked there for about, what, four or so years. Great time. I had kind of, I'd got like an inside look into how that shit goes. And, you know, I was lucky enough to buy, you know, the first Nike Yeezys and shit and, you know, put them on lay away. I got, ended up getting four pairs and stuff. So I've had a good time. Don't get me wrong. I'm not moaning and shit, but I also saw how scummy it could get, especially towards the end when stuff changed and there was a new lead. There was a new kind of head of energy marketing at the time. And that person came through and wanted their own vision and you know your access to stuff kind of changed yeah, in the shop floor and we don't sell ourselves so that kind of affected stuff and then we had people coming in who were obviously very selfish wanting to look after themselves and then you just were ended up in a position where you were kind of fighting to get pairs as a staff member working or at the time we were registered contractors but imagine we were working for nike and it was still difficult for us to get our own pairs really really hard to get don't um ever get it twisted it, obviously my access was far better than it is now but it was still difficult to get shoes you had to really kind of fight and hustle for yourself to make it work and again back then shoes weren't as you know lucrative as they are now so you know now with greed and resale prices people will do just about anything to fuck you over so it's just you know a whole complete shit show but what it's going on now at the moment with backdooring and with people botting sites, it's just way overboard. It's just a nonsense. And again, I don't blame the bottles or the resellers. It's mostly a fugazi, scammy operation that really kind of stems from the brands themselves, the retail stores and the distribution networks. Those are the people that are at fault, not the resellers, not the little spotty 16 year olds that are buying up a million pairs of Yeezys. It's the place where those shoes are actually coming from, which is why in recent weeks I've been very... Um, stern in my position that I've kind of refused to take part in that game I buy my GRs and my normal shit that I can get a hold of which is fine I think going forward I think it has allowed me to maybe 
re kind of ignite my love for shoes because I'm now buying stuff, you know, on sale. I'm buying stuff, for, you know, some GL, some Foot Locker, from JD Sports and shit. But in terms of buying limited edition shoes, I've refused to take part in that shit show. If I don't get a shoe, I don't get the ability to to be able to buy it on the raffle. Then I'm just gonna go straight to the Rep Fam community, find out the best link, find out the best batch of the shoe, and just buy it there because I, I I've had enough. Like I'm a grown adult. I don't need to be going jumping through hoops and you know playing games, tagging friends, resharing of posts on instagram resharing something on twitter just have a chance to buy shoes go f yourself and then my point was drummed home even more so via this really amazing article via bloomberg news that was doing the rounds um obviously across the interwebs that basically exposed the whole sham affair because one of these kids one of these reselling kids happened to be the son of a very high-ranking nike um executive who was using his mom's card access whatever it may be to get a pair uh, get a hold of shoes and then resell them on a resale market making a killing and of course that's just conflict of interest you know um whatever it may be which effectively led to her res resignation but this is what basically you're having to fight against when you want a pair when you just buy want to buy a pair of standard yeezy 350s right this is what you're fighting against this nonsense so this is a really great article from bloomberg it says sneakerheads have turned jordans and yeezys into a bona fide asset class it's written by joshua hunt so we're gonna go straight and go and flick and kind of find out who the kid is right there's herbert right we're just gonna go through all the links that say to do with him on the actual article so opening uh, paragraph says last july joe herbert um herbert sorry woke up early and drove to a small warehouse um he leased in eugene oregon um the track up says college town where nike inc was born so a kid that flipping lives right next to flipping oh, honestly i hate all this shit i hate it so much i hate i hate it he was expecting an important delivery 600 pairs of yeezy boost 350s um zion sneakers released by adidas 12 days earlier they sold out within hours and now commanded more than 100 pound above retail on the secondary market many sneakerheads would have felt lucky to snag a single pair of one of the world's most sought after styles adas ag products uh produces sorry just forty thousand pairs of yeezys each release which um are priced at 220 on retail sold through the yeezy supply website using a digital lottery when his shoes arrived the 19 year old who's best known to his customers as west coast joe stacked the hundreds of boxes of pairs of shoes in like poker chips on the on a sun um pavement outside his warehouse it said he says quote it's easy to get a lot of styles and they are pretty much always sell and um, he said one in a series of conversations we had last year about his business and um, what herbert meant by easy was this the day those Yeezys were released and um, he'd woken up at 3 a.m signed on on the message uh messaging platform discord and rousted 15 members of his cook group a term sneaker sellers um used to describe their allies in the arbitrage when the shoes went on sale uh, an hour later herbert's team um, swarmed the Yeezy supply website using their specialized computer programs such as Cybersoul, Kodai, um, Ganeshbot, each prepped with Herbert's credit card information and capable gaming system. By 6 a.m., the shoes were sold out and Herbert's boss had run up 132,000 on his American Express. No, actually, here's his mum's. Um, his company, Westside, West Coast Streetwear, resold the shoes in almost as little as time as it had taken for him to buy them, clearing 20,000 in profit. Again, this isn't like trophy room jordan ones these are still just standard yeezys that come out every single year <clears throat> and look how much money they're making on them insane <clears throat> and again limiting the amount that are available for regular partners to make I'm, I'm not i'm not against resellers i've resold a bunch of shoes myself right when you're young and you want to make some money this is the best way to do it outside of selling drugs i get it but God almighty, man, the way they sort of just siphon off and absolutely scoop up every every bit of Philippine inventory out there so that regular folks like you and I can't buy them is absolutely nutty. Um, Da, 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 da. I'm good. What it says? Um, anything that's releasing that I know I can make a guaranteed buck on, I'm gonna go into it. So we continue, right? Let's just see what else he said. Uh, da, da, da. Heber, heber, heber. We continue on uh, the sneaker boom has created opportunities it said here um herbert and other young resellers um first treat um footwear as a bona fide asset class products as a worthy of informed valuation the sneaker market for them is a lot like playing the market in the hours after um uh, siphoning up the stock of retailers they essentially sell short-term futures based on the street 
um, sentiment. By the time the prices plateau, ultra rare shoes such as the Jordan A1 OG Dior, a collaboration between Nike and the Parisian fashion brand, have become grails worth up to £10,000 $10, and more. We continue. Um, he said Foot Locker was panicking and a lot of small boutiques were panicking, doing 50% of sales, have it said. I was just trying to uh, just trying to dump all the stuff. Shoppers avoiding stores and flocking instead to e-commerce platforms such as StockX where young entrepreneurs like him were offering dead stock. Flocking cunt. Um, City, I remember the time the stimulus checks hit. My strip, my sales trip, would have it said. In May, he did 600 pounds. So imagine this little privileged asshole is kind of um, exploiting and fleecing people who are to, using their stimulus check, which they probably shouldn't be using, to buy some shoes in order to kind of get some short term happiness and joy in the flipping bleak world that we live in, living around COVID. You couldn't write this, innit? You really couldn't write this. Um, so it's here, Herbert's um, reselling career started in high school when he noticed that some supreme t-shirts he owned were going online for two or three times hundreds where he paid the margin traced at least partly down to the 2016 launch of, of StockX, where limited edition releases from supreme off and palace and other fuck palace by the way other streetwear brands were finding a new um it continued to when herbert began selling shoes 2017 StockX had gone from pros processing hundreds of transactions per day to tens of thousands demand was surging for desktop sneakers absolutely nutty you continue here Da, da, da. Uh, the move forward online sales a boom for resellers like Herbert who could use bots to note to target the most sought after sneakers and acquire them in far greater quantities than customers could in the days of lining up outside stores um, he and his peers operate instead in digital spaces like Nike sneakers app which the company made as a first place and sometimes the only place people could get certain limited apps the app executively effectively uh, gamified the Nike's engineer scarcity model making the experience of buying shoes like spinning a digital roulette wheel fucking hell man look at these scummy guys herbert score as a young uh shoes protect look at these people man um january 28 2020 he just dropped out of university of oregon midway through his second term um there he's racked up there he there he said he tracked down a man he'd heard about who stumbled across an exceptional find of abandoned storage unit and Nike mags the futuristic duh, duh, duh. let's continue of the bit that obviously exposed him let's go down and uh, the, the, the Instagram following Herbert's competitors have access to the same bot software stock X. <clears throat> yes, Herbert did kind of talk about his sources information, but he did say that he was lucky to have grown up in Portland where Nike and Adidas were uh, based their US operations. He said, if you know the right people, this is a city to sell shoes, the flipping cunt. The right people can give you access to stuff like a normal person would not have access to. What, like your mum and her network? These people, man, horrible. It continues. When COVID digital boom could um got so when the COVID digital boom got underway last year, Herbert found himself confronting the unexpected problem of having more customers than ever, but way of but no way of getting his hands on more kicks. For inspiration, he looked to co-founder Phil Knight. Oh, God almighty. Um Herbert's traveling companion was Justin Telefero. Um some of the best um sources, according to Herbert, came from the kinds of restrictive uh, purchasing limits. Let's continue here. Herbert had spent more than two hundred thousand on about two thousand pairs of shoes, which he hoped would return a profit of fifty thousand. Let's continue. Where's a bit where it's saying? I'm looking on high mud. <coughs> yeah, it's here. Um <coughs> So this is a bit that exposed him, right? This flipping kid. One is sort of dumb dumb. He ends up getting his mum fired from her job. He said he was also taking steps to go beyond selling shoes, which I learned quite by accident ran in his blood. At one point in late June after his trip, he phoned me and the number was identified as belonging to Anne Herbert. Right? I looked up the name and discovered that Anne Herbert, who worked at Nike for 25 years, right? 25 years i'd imagine she's probably not a sneakerhead just a really amazing c-suite executive who probably worked her way up you know tooth and clawed her way up to the higher rungs of nike probably had to do many many unnecessary meetings you know late nights in the in the office uh many powerpoint presentations just to get that job right i'm assuming she's just like a regular woman who happens to be really good at what she does and nike eventually rewarded her and then her son her clout chasing um fame obsessed flipping reselling idiot of a son who probably could just enjoy his mum's riches and live very comfortably off of whatever his mum makes and whatever he else he had access to took the piss and now ends up kind of costing her a job honestly terrible terrible um 
looked at the name 25 years of um she worked at nike for 25 years and had recently been made as vice president and general manager of north america the press release announcing her promotion noted that she would be instrumental in accelerating our consumer direct offense which what do you think that is what do you think that means um the nike initiative that helped fuel the sneaker resale boom Herbert later sent me a statement from an american express corporate card for wclcc to demonstrate west coast streetwear revenue and it was an and name even the company the LCC that he made, maybe it's because of American laws, he put it in his mum's name. He's buying shoes on his mum's credit card, calling people from his mum's phone, and also putting the LCC in his mum's name. This guy is a fucking idiot. Um, when I asked Hebert about the connection light last year, he acknowledged that Anne was his mother and said that while she had inspired him as a business person, she was so high up at Nike as to removed. How does that even make sense? How can she be so high up that she's removed, you idiot? Um, as removed of what she does and what she never received any inside information. He instead, though, um, he insisted though that she was not be mentioned in the article and cut contact off no longer uh, not long after our conversation and Hebert didn't reply to the email questions uh carry on john the nike sportswear spokesperson says and disclosed relevant information about wc and nike in 2018 there was no violation of company policy privilege information or conflicts of interest nor is there any commercial affiliation between um whatever his thing is and nike including direct buying or reselling of the Nike products. So again, this exposes the fact that, or at least casts this aspersion on this idea because people could always think, oh, how does this happen? Because these brands are in bed with the resellers. Some Think about it. All of these people that you're seeing with stacks of shoes, full-size runs that you'd find in stores, sometimes even better stock that you'd actually get from an actual retail store, how do they get a hold of it? It's because these brands, these retail distribution networks and these stores are in cahoots with the resellers. They have fixed the game. The game is fixed. The game is rigged. They don't want you to actually have the shoes. They limit the stock on purpose. It's artificial scarcity for the sake of it, which is why I'm rep firm for life. It continues. Um, Nike's marketing and corporate culture are strong enough in Portland that anyone there can steep in it the children of the company executive no doubt even more so but whatever advantages of growing up with the silver swish in his mouth Hebert's hustle couldn't be denied ah fuck him and his hustle so that's what happened and then look at the development look at the development this is courtesy of complex news nike vp resigns after family tad sneaker reseller is uncovered courtesy of complex right absolutely disgusting um so this is a statement here it said um, Nike and Hebert, of course, that boy's mum, a Nike employee of 25 years who most recently served as a VP overseeing North America business, left the company on Monday. So again, white privilege. She was not fired for her flipping disastrous and conflicting um, business practices and allowing her son to use her corporate card or whatever it is, an access of information to go and acquire shoes. Allegedly, she was allowed and given a permission to step down. Now again, maybe it's because effectively she, like I imagine, she was probably just a mum who happened to be really good, professional at her job, and she de definitely had no idea what her son was doing, but still. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Um, it says here, a quote from Nike, and Hebert, VP, GM, North America Geography, has decided to step down from Nike effectively immediately. The email reads, we thank Anne for more than 25 years of Nike and wish her well. And if you know anything about Nike, I worked in 1948, right? They booted us out quickly. But if you know anything about Nike, you'd know that people don't leave their jobs. That's probably why it's hard to get hired there, right? People don't leave. It's like a dream job. They treat you well. They pay you well. Um, you know, why else would you want to leave? They give you the opportunity to basically do your best work. So the fact that she stepped down is a real, real big indication that something Fugazi was going on, for sure. Nike also put out a press release this afternoon, publicly announcing the end of the tenure, confirmed the move in a statement to Complex. It said that Herbert made a decision to resign from Nike, the brand said. Herbert's living comes days after the publication of Bloomberg Peace, focused on her son, a 19-year-old sneakerhead in the Named Joe. Joe, what an idiot. The piece mentioned the credit card Joe used to resell in the uh, business West Coast Streetwear that was registered in Nan's name. The reseller insisted that the story's author and personal connection with his Nike said not be written up and the communication was cut off when it was brought up. Man. But like I said, man, the game is rigged. The game is absolutely rigged. They don't want you to win. And this is definitely proof of it. But again, I'm glad that. 
there are people out there now because you know the bigger the sneaker community gets the bigger the sneaker industry gets you're going to get these people who kind of turn into you know quasi sneaker and streetwear journalists who dig deep and find out these kind of nefarious ideas and things that are going on because i would have again if i was in tune with the community like i was back in the day i would have heard about this in the queue i would have found out through some whispers going around but you can never prove this sort of shit but now that the again studio community is a billion dollar sick industry is a billion dollar market um there's just way too many people involved now people are everyone's making a check from the sneaker influencers to the people doing unboxing videos on youtube it's only natural now that there's going to be a whole breed of sneaker in, investigative journalists who are going to come out and just uncover all this stuff and just blow up all these miscom you know blow up all these um blow up the entire industry and expose it for exactly what it is and i'm here for it i am here for it